Good day to everyone. Welcome to another Coffee Break program by Dr. Dharmasena. Today we are going to discuss about the procalcitonin and it is usage in the clinical practice to distinguish bacterial and viral infections. In our clinical practice, we use various number of uh, uh, markers to uh, identify inflammation and infection. The simplest one is fever, raised white cell count, raised CRP, and various other acute phase uh, reactive proteins. And precalcitonin is also used for a long time in the practice of uh, medical field to identify bacterial infection versus uh, viral infection. This is known to the uh, scientists for a long time since 2017 and its use has been increased over the period since 2020 and uh, was used as a very helpful uh, inflammatory marker to distinguish and uh, uh, think of antibiotics in case of SARS criteria and sepsis. As clinical practitioners and medical students, we all know that the bacterial resistance is a very big threat to the world and uh, unnecessary usage of uh, antibiotics causes lots and lots of problems and bacterial resistance to uh, antibiotics. So, procalcitonin could be used in a very effective way to overcome this problem. Let's recap about procalcitonin uh, before we go into the details. So, procalcitonin is a peptide precursor with 116 amino acids, which is produced mostly in the uh, C cells of the thyroid gland and uh, other neuro neuroendocrine tissues all over the body uh, in normal circumstances and uh, it it is converted into calcitonin with the presence of endopeptide A's and calcitonin uh, comes into the uh, bloodstream and it regulates the calcium concentration in the body and uh, in other words it regulates the calcium homeostasis. All the medical students and uh, medical persons uh, know about this. Procalcitonin production. There are two pathways in two occasions. In the natural normal circumstances, the CAL1 gene with the effect of CAL1 gene, the thyroid uh, procalcitonin pathway happens. Thyroid C cells and uh, neuroendocrine cells, especially in the lungs and the gut, produces uh, procalcitonin as a result of uh, calcitonin MRA release and then straight away the procalci uh, procalcitonin is released into the blood cir uh, circulation as calcitonin. So this is the normal production pathway in brief, just to recap. When there is an inflammation, especially a bacterial infection, I will give you the other circumstances as well. The production comes in this pathway, inflammatory PCT, procalcitonin, produced by adipose tissue, bone marrow and liver with the inflammatory mediators effect of interleukin-2, interleukin-6, and TNF-alpha. And uh, calcitonin mRNA is released from the nucleus and in the cytoplasm, procalcitonin is produced and this procalcitonin straight away released into the bloodstream. So this is the basic principle that we are going to discuss about uh, uh, procalcitonin and its clinical use today. Interleukin 2, interleukin 6, TNF alpha and other inflammatory mediators, they stimulate the production of procalcitonin and also very important point here, gamma interferon, gamma interferon. Please 
please remember this uh, to continue with our discussion because this is very important to distinguish these two. So gamma interferon, it inhibits this pathway, the production of procalcitonin. Gamma interferon inhibits interleukin 2, interleukin 6 and TNF alpha uh, induce the procalcitonin production. So two ways the calcitonin comes into the uh, bloodstream in the new natural uh, pathway and once inflammation is there, procalcitonin comes into the bloodstream where there is a bacterial infection. Infection and inflammatory process. Bacterial infection, viral infection. Usually when a bacteria comes in close uh, proximity of the uh, immune cells, there are receptors called toll-like receptors. Toll-like receptors. And these toll-like receptors get hold of the bacteria straight away. There are so many other pathways, but this is one of the pathways. And then the nucleus, it sends signals to the nucleus and the immune cell releases non-specific inflammatory mediators lots lots of non-specific inflammatory mediators but among them interleukin 2 interleukin 6 and tnf alpha stimulates adipose tissue liver and bone marrow to produce procalcitonin which is secreted straight away to the bloodstream in viral infection what happens is the inflammatory pathway goes in the same way and non-specific inflammatory mediators are released all these things are released but in the presence of excess gamma interferon in viral infection this procalcitonin production is inhibited and uh, procalcitonin is not produced and released into the bloodstream so when we check the procalcitonin levels in a bacterial infection it is above 0 0.25 0 0.25 less than 0 0.25 is the normal range so in a bacterial infection the procalcitonin level goes above 0 0.25 and in a viral infection the procalcitonin level remains normal normal value is less than 0 0.25 actually it is less, it is around 0 0.01 but we regard 0 0.25 as normal when there is a bacterial infection procalcitonin is released within uh, three hours of the infection and its half-life remains 24 hours whereas in CRP CRP takes its lags behind it takes about one day to release and uh, uh, the other thing is the no uh, as we discussed normal value is 0 0.25 and its sensitivity for bacterial infection is 76% and specificity is 70 percent that means there are so many other reasons as to uh, the raised procalcitonin in the blood so we are going to discuss about them as well i mentioned that the sensitivity and specificity uh, specificity is 70 percent uh, for bacterial infection so what are the other things which can cause raised uh, procalcitonin trauma surgery burns intracranial bleed stroke some autoimmune conditions like kawasaki disease not all the inflammatory uh, autoimmune conditions renal failure fungal infections pancreatitis graft versus host reaction so these things can cause raised 
procalcitonin without a bacterial infection or with bacterial infection. So this is the other 30% conditions which can cause raised procalcitonin. That is a disadvantage. And uh, low or normal procalcitonin levels can be seen in normal individuals in viral infections and remember atypical pneumonia even in atypical pneumonia that is mycoplasma and legionella the procalcitonin levels are low or normal so that is a place where you have to use antibiotics let's discuss about its usage in covid pneumonia i tried my best to do away with covid and give you other medical informations but we can't get rid of COVID still, right? So, procalcitonin is very helpful in the management of COVID pneumonia. As you all know, COVID pneumonia comes with uh, other infections as well. So, in the initial presentation, of COVID pneumonia, we start empirical antibiotics. Because mostly we can't distinguish whether this is COVID viral related pneumonia or whether it is secondary bacterial pneumonia. But the problem comes when we want to start interleukin-6 antagonists like tuzilizumab. So before prescribing tuzilizumab, we check the levels of procalcitonin. And if the procalcitonin levels are high, if the procalcitonin levels are high, there is a big possibility that this infection, pneumonia, is due to bacterial etiology. In the presence of bacterial pneumonia in COVID-19, in what ways it affects if you use interleukin-6 antagonists like tocilizumab? One, it is a waste of uh, resources. Two, it inhibits a lot of inflammatory uh, processes and it will make the bacterial infection worse. So, it is very helpful for us to know the procalcitonin levels before prescribing interleukin-6 uh, antagonists. So, this is very helpful in distinguishing whether it is due to COVID pneumonia or whether it is due to bacterial pneumonia. But remember one thing, in atypical pneumonia, the levels of uh, procalcitonin could be low. So we need clinical judgment, we need the x-ray findings, we need the other blood findings, we need the uh, proper history. With the help of all these things, with the light of procalcitonin we can come into a conclusion whether to prescribe interleukin 6 antagonists or not so this is very helpful in the usage of covid pneumonia i will briefly give an idea about other usages of procalcitonin in our clinical practice as our junior doctors and medical students know sometimes we really struggle to distinguish meningitis from bacterial meningitis and viral meningitis. So if you do the procalcitonin levels, we can get an idea as to whether it is bacterial meningitis or viral meningitis, but keep it in mind that fungal infections also can cause raised uh, uh, procalcitonin. In severe sepsis, we really, really use antibiotics and we give antibiotics, but we can monitor the prognosis or progress of the antibiotic usage and whether the antibiotics responds to the infection. Initial uh, bacterial infection causes high levels of procalcitonin and uh, 
if it is weaning off very quickly with antibiotic treatment we know that the antibiotics are working and it is effective and also we can have an idea as to when to stop the antibiotics by which way we can stop the unnecessary usage and prolongation of antibiotic use and inflammatory bowel diseases with bacterial infections in clinical practice especially in acute medicine and gastroenterology we get lot of patients with inflammatory bacterial uh, inflammatory bowel disease with diarrhea and uh, it's bit difficult to distinguish initially whether it is a bacterial infection or it is a uh, real uh, inflammatory process which is uh, uh, which is progressing or uh, even in such occasions we can use procalcitonin as a marker in pediatric practice sometimes it's very difficult to take a decision whether to give antibiotics or not for uh, inflammatory processes so it's a good opportunity that we can uh, use procalcitonin and distinguish between bacterial infection and viral infection remember each and every scenario you have to consider the picture with all other uh, resources like x-rays blood test history presentation and your clinical findings and uh, the other thing is when we treat an infection if we do procalcitonin levels we can find out how it progresses with the treatment i hope you enjoyed today's coffee break program thank you for listening and let's meet again with another program very soon